I'm here today at New York's Westchester County Airport where I'm gonna go on a demo ride on this Cirrus SR-22. I've had many flights in my life, but never have I had the airplane land itself. This Cirrus is the first piston-powered airplane to be equipped with Garmin's emergency auto land system. Cirrus has factory equipped all its aircraft with a full plane parachute called the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System or CAPS. Now Autoland gives its users an extra layer of safety. Safe Return was first approved for use by the FAA in the Piper M600 SLS turboprop single in 2020. It was then followed by other aircraft types, including Cirrus's single-engine vision jet. It is intended as an emergency landing system in the event the aircraft pilot somehow becomes incapacitated. When activated, the system will assume control of the aircraft, declare an emergency to air traffic control, plot a course to the nearest suitable airport, and land the airplane. As someone who is still slightly suspicious of the enhanced cruise control in my own car, I felt a little leap of faith in allowing technology to put us on the ground. Of course, having Ivy McIver, Cirrus's executive director for its SR product line, as well as an air transport rated pilot in the left seat helped ease my doubts. On this demonstration flight, we took off from New York's Westchester County Airport with McIver at the controls. After half an hour of flying, it was time to test out the system. Okay, so I'm just kind of just making a turn. I'm just hand flying so that you can see the autopilot um, engaging. Um, but whenever you are ready, you can go ahead and reach up and activate safe return. All right, so. We are now going to uh, press the button. We're going to initiate the safe return system by Garmin, and we're going to see how that goes. And here we go. Emergency auto okay, land so now we get the activating. initial warning. Once engaged, the safe return system will inform any passengers of the flight status on the cockpit data screens. So now, safe return emergency auto land is controlling all of your screens, controlling the airplane. Uh, we've got an hour and a half of fuel remaining. We're going to turn left. It went through its calculation and decided that Stewart was the closest, most safest, most appropriate airport. Um, and it's just playing a video to kind of keep the passengers informed of what's actually happening. If you do want to con contact ATC, you would just hold down that, um, that button. Just push your, put your finger on the screen. That way you'd contact ATC. In a real activation, this touchscreen controller would be the same as this touchscreen controller. So very passenger friendly. Here's our speed, here's our altitude. In addition to direct activation, the system also monitors the pilot's flying. If it detects erratic flying or no input on the controls for a period of time, it will also engage. Should the pilot regain the ability to aviate, they can disengage the system at any time and again assume control of the aircraft. So I'm not sure I trust self-driving cars. Here I am in a self-flying airplane. Self-flying airplane. So we're configured for cruise speed. You know, we want to get to the airport as quickly and as safely as possible. Um, so we've got a, a decent cruise speed. We've got about 160 on the cruise speed. As we get closer, that cruise speed will actually reduce to 145, and that's because the flaps deploy at 150 knots or less. So right now, our airspeed is about 150, yep. and our altitude is about 3,800 feet. Yep. And, and in two minutes, we're going to start descending for the airfield. And it's doing that all on its own. All on its own. It's also in an emergency situation. It's, it's handling all the communications with air traffic control. So it's giving me all indications. It's telling me turning right in three minutes, descending in one minute, 19 yep. miles remaining, total fuel remaining, which is very comforting. Will this system know to avoid other aircraft? It does not know to avoid other aircraft, but it is broadcasting an emergency in, in a, in a real-life activation. So it would be broadcasting on New York approach frequency. It would then sequence to tower frequency. Um, so uh, we would be squawking an emergency code, so it would show up on radar that we are squawking an emergency. So theoretically, approach controllers and ATC should be moving traffic out of our way. It will avoid terrain, obstacles, weather. So this is real open the pod bay doors out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we're landing in seven minutes. We've just got a nice, comfortable cruise speed. You'll see that power level moving to adjust to maintain that 145 knot cruise speed. 
So we're kind of approaching our um, the point at which we're going to configure for that final approach. Um, what you'll see is the power starting to come back. So that's the airport right over that's there. That's the airport. Yes. So in a moment, you'll see that a video play that we're configuring for landing. The power will come back. The flaps will deploy. And we're going to configure for a 95 knot approach speed. And again, it calculates all that based on weather and wind and yep, all that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So as we configure for landing, you'll see the video. Your airplane is now maneuvering onto its final approach. The emergency auto land system will continue to control your airplane down to a safe, controlled landing on the runway. Please ensure your seatbelt is securely fastened and that all loose items are stowed prior to landing. You'll arrive at your destination shortly. So you'll see the speed, we're going to configure for about 95 knots. Um, just a nice, stable, shallow descent to the runway. In a real activation, if it was cold, below 5 degrees, it would actually turn on the icing system um, to make sure that you didn't pick up any ice. And it would be communicating with the tower to let them know we are 7 mile final. And it's always configured to come in at this shallow uh, approach? Yep, exactly. So um, it basically, it is configured just in case you actually have ice on the airplane. So it's only going to have 50% flaps. It's going to come in a little bit steeper than you would on a normal approach. It's going to come in a little bit faster than you would on a normal approach. But it's going to fly you down to a nice, steady, shallow approach angle, um, a nice firm landing. It was an odd sensation as the airplane lined up on final approach to Stewart International Airport, made a textbook descent even while calculating crosswinds, and touched down on the runway while McIver simply looked on. All right, so we have landing in one minute. And we've got a little bit of a crosswind, so you'll kind of see it kind of maneuvering a little bit. We may end up one side of the runway or the other, but it's going to do its best to kind of maintain as close to center line as it, as it can. We're kind of crabbed into the wind a little bit. I'm going to work in that crosswind. Okay, so you'll see that throttle come back. It's just kind of working it down, working it through the flare sequence. Leading off that airspeed. And there's our landing. Now the flaps will come up. Brakes will start to engage. And we'll come to a full stop on the runway. Once on the ground, the system applied the brakes, brought the airplane to a stop on the runway center line, shut down the engine, and once it was safe, instructed us to leave the airplane. In the case of an actual emergency, the airport fire and rescue would have been alerted and would no doubt have met us as we deplaned. Wait for the airplane and propeller to come to a complete stop before exiting. To exit, lift the handle on either of the two cabin door armrests and push the door out. All right, so now we'll just kind of taxi off here. That was amazing. Pretty neat, right? That's amazing. <laughs> It's really pretty incredible, the integration between the mechanical servos and the software um, and the you know mechanical components of the airplane. We had a pretty reasonable crosswind coming in here. You know, it, it kind of had to work for that landing. It did, it did, it handled it. Well, with this, any fatalities due to pilot incapacitation should be a thing of the past. That's exactly right. And you know, uh, the thing that is, uh, I think, so impactful about the system is we're bringing this system to an aircraft with such a wide variety of pilot experience. So you've got everyone from student pilots to extremely experienced pilots, and we're bringing it over 600 airframes per year at a time. So I think it's gonna make the skies a lot safer. According to Mick Iver, within two years, there'll be more serious G7 plus aircraft equipped with Garmin safe return than all other aircraft types combined. So the parachute pretty much is a one shot deal. Um, once you make that commitment, there's no going back. What flexibility does this give you? Yeah, certainly the plane was designed around the idea of a parachute and having a parachute um, to help with 
a variety of situations. But once you pull the parachute, you can't unpull it, right? Like you can't pack that back in there. Um, so you've really got to be sure that this is the right thing to do. Um, so if you can think of the two layers of safety, the safe return system and the zero safety and parachute system, very simply, if there's a problem with the pilot or an issue with the pilot, uh, the safe return is your answer. Uh, but if there's a problem with the plane, um, the CAP system is there for you to deploy. For AIM, I'm Kurt Epstein.